I'm Adrian Besson from LC Fibrative Deer Farm. So what I will present you today is a joint work we achieved with Kratis uh, in France, and also with the Institute of Sensory Signal and System from Ariat Watch University in Scotland. We'll talk about uh, the sparse regularization approach, the novel method to reconstruct uh, image from a trophic ultrasound imaging. So first, I will in briefly remind you the principle of the trophic ultrasound imaging of the existing methods. Then I will present you the, the approach we will, uh, we will we built. And then I will present you some results, especially comparison in terms of contrast and resolution about, between our method and the existing one. And then I will conclude. So first, uh, ultrafast ultrasound imaging. I think all of you may know that. But it's in comparison to classical DDAS method in which we use focus beam at emission, ultrafast ultrasound imaging is based on emitting single plane wave or few steered plane wave. The main advantage is that it can reach more than 1,000 frames per second, but the price to pay is sometimes lower image quality than, than the classical method. That's why we need compounding. Uh, about the image reconstruction approach, there are two main types of approaches. The first one is called, uh, we can call it spatial based approaches that's been developed in Paris um, and it's basically an extension of the delay and some method to, to plane wave imaging. So they also implemented a compounding. And uh, there is another group of methods that are called Fourier based approach. So initially developed by Yan Yu Liu in 1997, there is also another approach developed by Damien Garcia and the one I will talk about. Uh, developed by Creatis and uh, Olivier Bernard presented it last year at this uh, in IUS, uh, which is uh, I will I will insist on mainly on these methods. So it is called uh, ultrasound free slice beam forming. So what is the general scheme? So first, let us suppose that here it's a uh, it's the picture of our image. Here is supposed to be there is a probe. So here are the different RF lines. So this is our the backscatter's echo. The principle is from this echo, so we take the Fourier transform in time, and then we tilt, so we simulate a delay at reception, we take the Fourier transform and we sum. So from different delay, we obtain different uh, black lines. So here are all the delays, and here is the case space because we take the Fourier transform. So here, we call it radial Fourier samples. And actually, from this radial Fourier sample, what we want is to recover the desired image. The problem is that this problem is ill-posed. So there is formulation, but the, it's hard to, to uh, invert the, the, the function that, that links these two, these two entities. And there, there exists some method that use approximation of the inverse uh, operator, but that leads to artifacts. So that's why uh, we will introduce our methods. So the, our method is based on two pillars. The first one I said is that the ultrasound Fourier slice beam forming poses an inverse problem. Uh, that means that actually we can relate our radial Fourier sample to the desired image by an operator phi, but this operator is ill posed actually. So we cannot directly apply phi minus one to retrieve the, the desired image from the, the radial Fourier samples. And when we deal, the usual way to deal with such problem is to regularize it, so to introduce sparse so priors onto the desired image. Prior by prior we mean behavior the, of the, this image. And the usual prior we use is the sparse model. That means that actually the energy of, the, of this uh, the, the desired image is concentrated into few coefficients in a given model. So there are several models that have been already studied for example, uh, wavelet basis, wave atom frame, Fourier basis. There are plenty of, of studies about that. The model we use is a slightly different. It's uh, called a sparsity averaging model. Actually, it consists only in a concatenation of wavelets. So here in our study, Q equal eight, and the wavelet, uh, the model function we use is the Dobeshi wavelet function. Why doing so? Actually, because Psi one actually is the Dobeshi, first Dobeshi wavelet, which concerns more the piecewise smooth function, while actually uh, Psi eight here concerns more like signal with high variation. Based on these two pillars, the principle is to solve the following class, quite classical problem, which is we want the sparsest solution because we know 
that our solution is sparse in the, in the basis, we, in the model, we Sarah model, in the model I talked to you just before, but we want our solution to be to, to respect actually the measurement model we defined. So relaxed by this epsilon. So we want our measurement to be not too far, our solution to be not too far from the measurement. This problem is nonlinear, but it's convex. Why? Because these two functions are convex. Then there is plenty of algorithm to, to reconstruct that and to solve this problem to find the optimal R. For example, the, the one we use is the uh, ADMM algorithm, really well known, so it has been developed by Boyd. And it, actually, one important parameter is this epsilon, which is uh, actually the trade-off between our data fidelity and the sparsity. And in order to find actually the, um, the best value, we use a golden section search algorithm. So we run different times the, the algorithm. We define a quality metric, to to, to um, and then we um, we from this we find the best value of epsilon. So then, once we have our algorithm, we would like we would like to test it. So we tested it first on based on simulation for essentially measuring the contrast just based on field to software. Then we went to experiments to test the spatial resolution. And finally, the comparison are made with, uh, against the current state of the art method, so the one, the Fourier method I spoke before, and also the, the spatial based uh, method. It, about the contrast uh, experiments, so we simulated, as uh, I said before, it's, uh, we simulated a two by two centimeter phantom with high density of scatter, that means 20 scatter per resolution cell. Uh, inside this, the, the, this medium, we put a eight millimeter diameter uh, anechoic lesion center, so nothing, uh, nothing inside this lesion in a high density uh, medium. And we apply from that, we image using a 64 element probe uh, with five megahertz center frequency, 50 megahertz sampling frequency. And we apply the beam from the reconstruction methods uh, that exist. So this is what we get with the classical reconstruction. So this is ultrasound, uh, the method developed by uh, Creatis. What we can see is that there are a lot of artifacts here, not only due to interpol to uh, approximation error, but mainly. And this is what we get with our method. So we really, we clean the center of the, of the, the lesion. And here is the, actually here you can see the contrast, the CNR measurement, so the, the, the intensity in the lesion against the number of plane waves because we implemented also our, our method with, with compounding. Our, the result for our method is in green here. And here are all the states of the hard method. So we can see here that we obtain far better results for one plane wave especially, and then uh, we, we are better than, than the existing method for, even for compounding. What about resolution now? So in order to measure the resolution, we use the hula system, so six, same as the simulation for the probe, 64 element, five megahertz center frequency, 50 megahertz sampling frequency. So we measured the resolution at different depths. So we put a nylon wire at 25 millimeters, 35 millimeter, 45 millimeter, and then we applied this. We applied the same reconstruction method that the one we uh, I talked about just before. And this is what we get with the classical ultrasound precise informing method. And this is what we get with our uh, method. So what you can see is we clean a bit this, this part and this part. We, may, we increase the silo, but actually we realize that when we calculate the, the resolution, there are a lot of figures, but this is our method and these are all state of the art method. But what is important is that we didn't see, we didn't see a really increase of the resolution. That means that the main lobe here remained the same as uh, as the main lobe here. Why actually? Because we promote sparsity, not in a direct basis, that's what are promoted like spikes, but we promote sparsity in the wavelet, in a wavelet type basis that promotes more structure that way. So then in conclusion, so what we propose in our work is a new reconstruction method that exploit sparsity of ultrasound imaging to solve a problem that was imposed at the beginning instead of using approximation of the inverse operator. This yields to better image quality, especially in terms of contrast. 
We also tested on in vivo data and effectively we conserve structure, but yeah, it, it especially enhanced the contrast. But the problem, main problem in what we're working on especially is that it leads to high computational load at reconstruction because it involves convex optimization algorithm that are computationally costly and that leads several iteration around 20 to converge to the, to the optimal solution. So in perspective, uh, since our model, the, the, the way of solving this as an inverse problem is quite general, we can extend it to, to a sorry, Fourier method to all to Garcia and Lu, but also to space-based method. We can also include uh, compressed sensing. It's just we, we can modify our model. The other work, we are working on other stuff, especially accelerating the algorithm. Now it's in MATLAB, we're working on GPU. There is, we are a computer guy that is working on implementing everything on GPU. But also we're thinking about clever strategy to, to compute the, 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 the reconstruction, for example, stitching the images into small images and then applying parallel optimization. And then, as my colleague will, will talk to you just after, we are working also on extending this framework to diverging way to then go to 3D. So, thank you for your attention. <laughs>